All right, so today we're gonna start making some of our custom components for Gas Monkey Garage's C10 that's gonna be at C. Today we're at Titans of CNC. Uh, these guys are absolutely the best, the pinnacle of CNC machining. They make stuff for the space shuttles and for, you know, the governments and all kinds of ways, wacky stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, they've got every kind of piece of equipment here. Uh, they just happen to be down the street from Gas Monkey. I had a crazy idea that I wanted to enhance the grill and the lettering and the side trim, possibly. You know, these guys came by the shop. I was out of town. They talked to the guys. So I got some Titan CNC here, and it's time to get an idea of what we're going to do, man. It would be sick to have the big billet letters G. Gee. This is kind of Richard's idea, taking, shaving those off, and then having the actual billet letters back here of GMG. So that's what we're doing today, is we're gonna see what their magic is all about. Titan, hey, right what's on, up man. Richard, man? Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you, man. Awesome. I, I really appreciate you jumping on this project for us. This is unbelievable, yeah, it's This is crazy. one solid piece. We made it out of like 500 pounds of 6L4B titanium right there. I mean, I know just enough to know that that's gotta be probably the only one in the world. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we got the scan you guys sent over, and you can see that it's not exactly optimal, but we were able to work with it. Wow. Oh. So from that, we took it and turned it into this, so. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. No, that's super rad, man. I like that. But what about the lettering? What did we decide? Yeah, so we had a couple of options. My initial thought would be to make it easier for you guys to not have to cut these original letters off would be to make something that actually fit over each letter. So you're saying if we did the blocks that you would want the blocks on the hood, too? Yeah, three squares. I mean, I think that'd be pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, it'll look good. That'll be more than enough for people to stop in their tracks and be like, what? We can get started on the letters right away. That'll be an easy thing, so no problem there. We'll do that, order material, and we'll start machining. We're gonna actually do some tutorials on how to make them and show the speeds and feeds, the tools, and just the recipe on basically how to machine it. So later on, people can actually go on and then Check out Titans of CNC and learn how to do it. I can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate man. it. Yeah, it's an honor to work with you guys. Oh, right? come on, man. It's Texas, an honor baby. to work with you, man. So if we take a look at the tailgate for the C10 that they're going to be building, you can see that we have three embossed letters on the back of it. Now, in order to make it so that they don't have to cut these letters off, we're going to make some plates that have a pocket in the back of them that fit right over the existing letters. So if we head on over to SolidWorks, you can see that we have our three letter plates modeled up. We have our stock modeled in. And if we take a look at these letters, we can see that the back of them has a pocket that the OEM letters are going to fit perfectly inside of. Then we're gonna have these beautiful plates with instead of GMC, we're gonna have GMG for Gas Monkey Garage. So again, these are pretty simple components and it was super easy to model these in SolidWorks. Only took me about 15 minutes. And now we have all three models ready to go and we're gonna export them so that we can bring them in the master cam and start applying tool path. Now for our finishing tool, we wanna make sure that we use a holder that's really accurate, that has minimal run out. So we're gonna be using our Heimer shrink fit system to get this tool into our holder. Now putting it in this shrink fit holder is gonna give me the best possible floor finish because we're gonna have minimal run out and our tools in a good sturdy holder. All right, so like I said, I don't wanna to have to build a fixture for these since I only have to make three parts. If I put my raw material in here, you can see that I have all this area that's unsupported in between my jaws. Now I've machined enough aluminum in thin parts to know that this is gonna cause some crazy harmonics. So in order to get rid of that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these pieces of cork and rubber mixed isolators and we're gonna use these underneath our part. Now I want a lot of pressure on my part from these. So if I put my part in now, you can see that it's sitting on there, but it really isn't putting much upward pressure on the part. So I'm gonna just use a piece of folded paper in between the layers to get me lifted up to where I want it. Now when I put this in my jaws, you can see the part rocks quite a bit. So what I'm gonna have to do is press down on the part, barely tighten my vise, and then beat the part down while I tighten the vise the rest of the way. All right, so we have our vise snug. And you can hear when I hit the center of this stock, it doesn't ring. Now, I've seen people use a lot of different tricks to get rid of vibration in their part. I've seen like clay mixed with ball bearings. There's all kinds of different products out there. The point is you want to make sure that you're using a material that doesn't have a consistent vibration profile. And that's why we're using cork mixed with rubber. All right, so now that we got our material loaded up, let's probe our stock and then start making some chips. for action. 
All right, so for our first operation, we're gonna come in with our three inch Stellram face mill and just take 20 thou off the top of this part. The very next thing we're gonna do is come in with our quarter inch end mill and we're gonna do some dynamic milling around the outside shape of the G. Now you'll notice that I set two extra avoidance boundaries and that's because these are gonna be the surfaces that are sitting on top of my vise and I want them to be at the same plane that the top of my G is. This is gonna be my Z0 for the second operation. Now right after that, we come in and do our finish pass. And if you take a look at this test part that I did, you can see the tool marks that are here inside of the G. Now we really don't want those to be visible in our finished part. So like I said, I'm gonna show you guys two ways that we were able to get rid of those completely. All right, so now if you take a look at this part, you can see that we have a beautiful finish here in our floor. You can even see the reflection of my finger. The thing is, with this being such a cosmetic part, we don't want to be able to see these lines at all. So that brings us to our next secret weapon. So what you guys see here is one of my favorite tools that I've ever used, and it's a deburr brush from Brush Research. Now this thing's got ceramic bristles in it, and it's gonna basically act like Scotch-Brite, and it's gonna take all of our burrs off and our machining lines and it's gonna put about a five thou edge break on all of our sharp edges. The deeper brush just finished going over our part and take a look at what we have. Inside of our whole G and the whole platform, we have absolutely no machining lines left. Now that was our second trick. Now you can see that we still have marks left from our brush here, but we're gonna cover that with our third trick later on. Now let's get our chamfers in and our engraving done, and then we'll get to our second operation. All right, now after we finish our floor, we're gonna do a little hole here that gives us something to probe in our second operation when we flip the part over. Then we use that same quarter inch end mill to work our way around the outside of the part. And if you look here, you can see that we got four tabs that are 20 thousandths thick and a quarter inch wide by a half inch long. Now these tabs are gonna be critical to processing this part completely. After we cut around the profile, we're gonna come in with our chamfer mill, put some nice chamfers around the G and around the outside of our base plate. And then we're gonna come in with a tapered ball end mill and we're gonna engrave lines up and down in our G. All right, so we got our first operation of our G complete. The part really looks beautiful. You can't feel anything in the floors, but we still have the marks from our brush. We're gonna get rid of those a little bit later, but for now, we're gonna start our second operation. So you can see, we came in and we traced the profile of our G, and then we come in and we put our vertical lines. After that, we flip our part over and we mill out a pocket on the backside. finish pass on the floor. And then we work our way out on the very back of the part. All right, now, that last tool path that you just saw is of critical importance to this process. If you take a look at our tabs, on this side, like I said, they're a quarter inch wide, a half inch long, and 20 thou thick. So if we were to work our way out from this wall, that full width of the tab, now our part's not gonna be supported very well. So what we did is we just went 10 thou into our tabbed area, so now we have a very rigid tab. So when we go to knock our part out of our stock, it's gonna leave just a very minimal tiny piece of burr here that we can hit with a file or a sander and it'll be gone with no problem. All right, so we got our second operation complete. Now you may be wondering why I used a quarter inch end mill on this side. And that's because with a bigger tool, I would have been putting more cutting force into my part. And even though we have the rubber dampeners underneath this, we don't wanna to put too much cutting force in because that's gonna increase the amount of vibration that we have during our cut. Now that this operation is complete, I'm gonna show you why this tabbing method is so genius. All right, so check it out. We got our first letter done, we got our G, and now check out how easy it is to knock this thing out of the stock. Easy money.
All right, so check out the back side of this part. You see that we didn't use our deburr brush on here, so we still have all of our tool marks. But we did this intentionally because Gas Monkey Garage is just gonna bondo this to their tailgate. So the rougher surface gives them a better adhesion surface for their glue. All right, so we got our first letter done. Now we're gonna move on to our M and our final G, and then it's on to Trevor for our third tip of the day. So I have these machine parts here and I got all the tool marks out of them, but I still have these brush marks on. So I want to see if maybe you could throw them in the Burking and tumble them with maybe ceramic first and then walnut shell. And I know you're not really used to looking at machine parts because you're always playing with fairy dust and wires. So, uh, <laughs> just make sure that these are even greater than what they are right now. I can do that for you. All right, about time you did something. I'm surprised Barry even knew what letters to make, you know, barely knows the alphabet. <laughs> Yeah, so basically we got a pump that's pumping in a little bit of water mixed with some soap and we're gonna throw our G in there first and it's just gonna work its way around the tumbler and it's gonna give it a really nice consistent surface finish along this whole entire part. All right, so we got our last letter here and as you can see, it's still a little wet from the soap and stuff, but the ceramic media did its job. We got a nice consistent finish on all these surfaces. Now we're gonna pull our ceramic media out and we're gonna replace it with walnut shell and it's gonna polish up this entire part, make it just perfect. Record time. Check it out. Turned out pretty good, huh? Yeah, they came out beautiful, man. Do you do ceramic and then walnut? Yep. Check that thing out. Ooh, man, finally you did something right. Incredible. <laughs> You're even awesome. able to get my signature chatter pattern. I out. know, crazy. I mean, the Bird King did all the work. I just put them in there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our letters are done. It's time to get these things over to Gas Monkey so they can do their thing. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys again next time. I'll send you the bill. Oh yeah, thanks Trevor. Bye. These things look like trash. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Woo! Man. Spare part. I was like, Barry finally lost it. <laughs> I lost it a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a real tumble finish right there. <laughs>